Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Deaths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to the sandbox mode in which we're testing out a brand new vehicle. Now, originally, this vehicle wasn't going to have missiles at all, and in fact, it was going to be our new resource transporter. It was going to be a little bit longer and then have just loads of barrels on the back holding fuel and material. Then I realized if I put an anchor missile section like this it actually looks pretty good now it's nowhere near done yet so I will be working on this but hopefully it shouldn't take too long and then we can test it out in some proper battles so far it does pretty well it holds enough ammo to keep on firing missiles for a long time the missiles are very long range at the cost of a bit of damage and I think it's going to be okay so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and alter this so the missiles are actually a little bit better perhaps a little bit bigger in fact, and I'm going to give it an AI very similar to our laser vehicle, so it's going to go away from the enemy until it is a certain distance away, and then just stay there, but unlike the laser vehicle, it will actually stay still. The laser vehicle slowly goes around in a circle to be a little bit more evasive, but instead I'm going to just have a much weaker engine and make this a lot more survivable by just adding more armor. I could add a laser munition defense, or I could add some shielding or something like that, but right now it only costs 7,000 resources, which is really cheap, and I don't really want to make it go over 10, 15,000 at most, so it would be nice if it stayed at that price. Also, it's a lot smaller than it originally looks. There's the tank, there's this little missile carrier. So... First of all, let's make these missiles a little bit better. Also, ignore the exhaust warning sign. That's because I'm using exhausts as a decorative piece, even though currently I don't have an engine. But it's still giving me the warning anyway. And it looks very cool firing missiles. Yeah, they need to be a bit more powerful, though. They're currently three warhead, one explosive, two fragments, and although they definitely get the job done... As you can see, it's tore off all of that other than the heavy armor. It's just not quite enough. I would rather have a higher burst than a higher fire rate. So, be right back. Oh, well, I left it on. Okay, larger missiles this time. Yep, I hear some internal damage already. Okay, yeah, that has shredded the armor and damaged one of the... Actually, com almost completely broken this weapon. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now, it will have a longer reload time, but I would rather have a stronger alpha strike than a faster, more reliable reload. Yep, I am fine with that. Okay, that's what we're going to stick with then. Larger, more expensive, and slower firing missiles. Now, I may have to weaken them slightly, depending on how far they can go. As long as they can go 1,500 meters, I'll be happy. Any less than that, then I'm really not. Yep, that's just fine. Again, considering this is still less than 10,000 resources, that's doing just fine. Well done. Now we need to protect the missile section, which is going to cost a fortune, and try to make it look good. And then, of course, finish the back section here, which is a little bit exposed. At the moment, we're using pure frag warheads. I may swap that to a frag explosive hybrid. And, wow, just under 1,500. That's fine. That is absolutely fine. It's a little bit shorter range than I would like, but with how much damage these can do, I think it's going to be worth it. I wonder how good these missiles are, though, versus something airborne. Even something slow, I feel like these missiles are going to struggle massively, because they're so focused on damage and their range. They have very few fins, they don't have one turn, and they don't have target guidance, which means they won't try to figure out where the enemy's going, they'll just keep on trying to go towards the enemy, which is great against things moving towards you, and larger enemies, but smaller enemies moving quickly, that's a different story. So, lightning hoods, thruster craft, is it the streak I'm thinking of? 
Yes, it is. Okay, let's see if we can actually hit. Well, would have been good if I remembered to turn off the tank. Okay, that looks really cool, so I'm leaving that in the video. Faster, more agile, with target guidance, and yep, there we go. And there we have it, the aircraft killer version. Except for you two. You two are our special missiles. Those go at almost double the speed and can turn ten times faster, according to their stats. So yeah, a tad better versus flyers, has to be said. They're guessing where the enemy's going, and then... but far less damage. And that's kind of the thing. With a missile, all you're really balancing is damage, speed slash ag agility, and distance, and that's it. So you can easily make it really powerful in two of them and have a very specialized missile, or even just one of them, make it very specialized, but then you have to sacrifice one or two of the other elements. So with this one, we're sacrificing a lot of damage for the size of missile, but we're getting very quick and very good at tracking missiles. The original versions, also did you see that missile go through the craft? That looked awesome. But the original ones are sacrificing all of that agility for pure brute force and versus something which has forces like, oh I don't know, the Rhino, the much larger missiles will be significantly better, whereas these won't do enough damage. Oh wow. I kind of forgot about its anti-munition system there. Well, that's good. That's why you have several type of craft, and at least it means this craft can't be all on its own. And that's kind of the point. Though, that is kind of annoying for that test, though. Okay, so we're going to have the wheels uncontrolled by the AI. We're going to use aerial AI, because that's the easiest way to always be pointing at a target. And then the wheels themselves will be controlled via control blocks, which simply try to figure out how far the enemy is away. And if they're closer than 1,400 meters, we'll back off. If they're further away, we'll move forwards. And I've spoke about all this before. Now, when it comes to their power source, I think I am going to go with RTGs. This way, if I want want to convert this into our resource carrier, which I probably will honestly, since we're meant to be scrappers, I can see us reusing the same blueprint over and over, especially ones made out of pipes and stuff, then that'll be a lot easier as well, since I don't want our, our harvester, no, our resource carrier to be constantly devouring the resources it's trying to carry, so all the fuel being used up by the vehicle itself seems a little bit counterproductive. Now the thing is, I am running out of space. The ammunition starts about here, the AI is at the very back, and the ammunition stops about there, that way they're not completely touching, but that means we don't really have much space for an engine. Thankfully, we don't really need all that much space, honestly. We're going to have two of the smallest RTGs, and then a few batteries, and that's going to be just about it. So, let's see if I can find somewhere I can place this, and then armor it up. Even with very little engine power, this thing can really get moving. It's been a while since I've used just regular wheels, so that was kind of weird to see. And then we move backwards because there's an enemy presence. Then after this, we'll add the thrusters, or we can add some internal rotor blades, which will then actually turn the craft. Because at the moment, all it can do is go backwards and forwards, and that's why it's moving like it is. Let's just make sure this works. Almost every one of those missiles cause an internal explosion. Well done, missiles. Um. Yeah. Isn't that a bit too far? No, it's not apparently. Okay, so never mind. I just thought 1,400 meters was a bit closer than that. And then I'll just rock back and forth where it is now. Unless the enemy gets closer. I could actually just make it stop. That is something I could do. But I would rather it have some movement. And the missiles have no trouble getting to the target. Yeah, that's a good distance. Feels safe-ish from cram shots. 
And I am actually now really considering adding a laser munition defense to this thing. I think I may make a more expensive version in the future which will have that, but right now it's not worth all the additional engine work I would need to power those lasers. It would just make it so expensive. At the moment, we're just now over 10,000. All we really need to do is add some internal blades and some armor for the missiles, and we're done. So it's going to be just over half the cost of a tank, so we can have two of these per tank. And as you can just see, the amount of damage potential this thing has is probably the highest in our entire force. And it's missiles. Oh, I missed missiles. Let's see if some basic movement is now working. Summon in the bison, turn it off. Yep, that is definitely turning. Wow, it's doing a full-on drift. Okay, yeah, that is definitely enough turning for this little craft. Oh, though you can see where the rotor blade is because it's kind of glitching a little bit there. Well, pretend you didn't see that. And yeah, that's just fine. Did the missiles hit? Yes, they did, doing a lot of damage. Ready to fire again? Lovely. Okay, let's summon something to the east. I kind of want to see it turn again, honestly. It seems to turn faster when moving forwards. Oh no, probably because it just didn't have to turn as much. Did that really spawn right next to my scorpion? And wow, missiles from that section. Look how much damage that's done. It's gone straight through the heavy armor. Then the scorpion got bored. Yep, this is why the scorpion's better against lighter enemies. I can't even see damage being done there, friend. No. Oh, there you go. Look, you knock something off. Go you. Oh, that was... Well, that was brutal. Okay, yep, yeah, the missiles are definitely proving themselves here. So, we're actually very, very, very close to being done now. All I want to do is double check on all of the armoured sections, do a few tweaks to how it looks, and I may add a bit more armour to the missile section. Honestly, I feel like it looks a bit too basic at the moment. I like how the Minecraft looks, but the weapon? Less so. I'm also expecting some lore on this thing, especially considering we're just adding a missile section to something that can be converted to other things later on. In fact, there's enough space where the ammo is currently being stored for a very light advanced cannon, or even a decent sized cram cannon, so I feel like if I get this right, I'll probably use this design more in the future, similar to the tank, as a base build. So, I'm really of two minds about this. Half of me really likes how this looks, because to me, it really looks like this is a transport vessel with a huge weapon literally bolted on. It's been welded everywhere it can so it doesn't fall off and is now being used as a weapon, because we are scrappers and that's just what we do. The other part of me is just thinking, wow, we could meld these two together in such a better way. And I am so torn between those two ideas. I'm even considering leaving this completely open because A, I just think it looks cooler, especially from angles like this. And B, once again, we don't really have unlimited resources. That's the whole point of the scrappers, to recycle everything. We have tubes and pipes trying to hold everything together. It's just all welded and weird looking, and I love that. So I think I'm really, really close to being done. What, what I'm actually considering doing is adding some older metal, maybe to the weapon itself, or changing the color of the parts, which I'm kind of considering as... The welded sections, also I'm using the term welded too much, the sections which have been added to the main part which has been scrapped, so there's a bit of a contrast. So maybe lightening up these blocks and these sections on the side, maybe even the poles, so it looks like that's something separate from both of the two entities, but is simply holding it together. That's kind of what I've done down here, I wanted this section running along here to not really look like either of them, but more like a harness. and. Yeah, I like this craft and I don't. I think what I need to do though is do something more to the front. I kind of had the idea originally, then scrapped the idea, of these two being separate vehicles. That's why they both have wheels on the inside as well. Because then it's like these wheels have been scrapped to the harness and then something back here. Maybe this was once a part of a tank, this was once part of a car or a dune buggy or something. Yeah. I'm not too good when it comes to themes, you can probably tell. I don't know how I feel about this. Please give me your honest opinions in the comments.
Also, once again, we do need a name, and we do need a bit of lore for this thing. I do think it looks better, though, without the weapon, so maybe that's a thing. If you remove the weapon, this actually looks pretty nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, doing the scariest form of testing now. How well can this thing handle being hurt? Well, to start off with, at maximum range, it has managed to dodge, like, three or four volleys of cram so far, with only a slight burn on the side. Oh. Wow, yeah, that slight movement is really throwing it off, I say, whilst I get hit. Okay, ammunition stores are still okay. We did survive what is essentially a direct cram shot. Slowly healing up, purely because I'm inside. I don't actually have repair bots on this thing yet. Or material storage. Oh. Layered armor. Can this thing actually beat a bison? Oh, no, it can't. Okay, that was a really solid hit. What happened? Okay, it hit directly in the missile launcher. Has that turned it off? I can't tell. I think it has, yeah. Oh, no, no, it hasn't. The missile launcher is still just about functioning. Never mind, it's half functioning. It really shouldn't be able to beat a bison one-on-one, -on -one, even at max range. But saying that, it looks like it can actually keep it at max range. It is slightly faster than the bison. The bison is looking shredded. How much does the bison cost again? Because my craft now costs 12,000. How much does the bison cost in comparison? Okay, <laughs> almost 50,000. Oh, chain reaction has went off then. The back weapon's gone. Oh, there it goes. Turned off. As long as those cram shots don't kill it. Oh, are you not turning? Well. I think I've got... Ow. Wait, did it manage to knock out my... Friend or foe? It must have. I definitely have friend or foe, otherwise I, I would have been shooting the tank during the earlier tests. Oh yeah, so it did, because it's right there. That's where it's located. In fact... Did I just see the friend or foe bouncing around? I think I may have. Yeah, that's it there. <laughs> he knocked out the friend or foe. I have definitely got better at armoring up, and these two at the front, which are basically nothing, and then this huge chunk of armor here, absorbed so much of that damage. Okay, yeah, we are going into the campaign, and we're doing a fight. Hopefully with at least two of these on our side. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm actually tempted to make these missiles even more brutal, I think I might do before we go. And how am I going to do that, you may ask? Make them bigger, or make them even slower with more payload? One of the two. Be right back for at least one fight in the campaign. Is that broke or something? It doesn't seem to really care that we're moving towards it. Yes. Oh, it's still camping out on the blueprint. Is that a bug? Is that a bug? I really don't know. Things just seem to really love camping out on the um, blueprints for some reason. Yes. The enemies still have a massive resource and volume advantage, but let's see how we do. Oh, poop. Well, at least it's only affecting one of our missile craft, but oh, I completely forgot about that. I hate the fact you have to do that, as in stand there before the fight so the land spawns him. He is gonna flip so high in a second. Ooh, that looks like that's going to be a bit of friendly fire. Is that the Rhino? Okay, so the Rhino's still massively online. I thought it'd taken more damage. Apparently, I was wrong. Oh, lovely. Look at that, though. Oh, loads of Hesh shells all attacking the Rhino. Lovely to see. Incoming the missiles from both of the missile craft. Doing a significant amount of work, although, of course, the Hesh shells are still the bread and butter of our forces. Oh, the missile's going straight for the Rhino, and one of them kind of bounced. Ignoring the bounce, the rest are doing pretty darn well. 
Still proving, though, that missiles are not the powerhouse they used to be. Oh, that is the Scorpion getting just destroyed on the front section there. The missile's... The, the missile scraft? The missile craft is backing up and is now in the optimum position, so they're both nice and safe, and just pelting the whole battlefield with shots. The Rhino is dead! The Rhino is down! I missed that because I was being distracted by my own weird speech. Again, though, the Hess shells are destroying the Onyx Watch forces. One copter has been shot down. Missiles there just out of range. The reason is the missiles are being fired at something closer and then they went after something further away. I think I may need to put them a little bit closer to the battle then to prevent this because the problem is the weapon system isn't necessarily going after the closest target. In fact, the missiles you can't even control that way if they're using the radio heads, which mine do. But it's movement in terms of how far away from the enemy it's meant to be is is always going off whichever is closest i cannot talk well today anyway bouncing missiles <laughs> look at them drifting missiles oh hesh everywhere lovely look at that all of the tanks firing in a little bit of sync there not upset with that in the slightest Almost Triton mi- no, some of them were Triton missiles, not all of them though, as a cram lands on its head. Yeah, okay, definitely need to make the craft closer to the fires. Or just make the missiles longer ranged, maybe just that honestly, a little bit of sacrifice of force. The missiles did a great job though, but ultimately it was definitely the Pharaoh tanks which carried this fight. By the looks of things, we've lost quite a bit of health as well, but at least we have defeated their main force, and this was a very large fight, very badly commentated, and very badly um, shown in cameramanship. Missile's doing some work there against my own forces. Okay, we need to do something about that. The problem is the Pharaoh tanks getting too close to the enemy, and there's just too many units. We do have... Not even going to comment... Maybe I will comment. How's it going, Jeff? It's going fine, Bob. How's it going, Frank? Oh, you know, can't complain. How's the wife? Just a day at work for them, lads. And again, the missile's going after something much, much further away. At least the one missile guy was doing all the work there. Oh, all of the Hess shells at once! Well done, Bob, Frank, and the other one. Okay, we definitely saw a few flaws there. Whee! And I think the main thing is, yeah, these need to get a little bit, wee closer. They're so quick. They're so much faster than I expected. They're not that fast, they're as fast as expected. Okay, we didn't take too much damage. Uh, definitely at a loss there, but... Considering how the Rhino in that group, we're still in a very good position and we can move forwards now into the onyx watch domain so yeah i don't think the missiles are going to do as well as i thought in terms of being in a group that's one of the great things with the flyers like a seagull yay the flyers fire missiles from the top therefore there is there is absolutely no chance of them hitting the allies underneath now what i could do is swap out the thrusters for the short range thrusters which you can easily put on a delay without using lure which means you fire them in the air it takes a few seconds to activate then they go towards the target so they're essentially being fired from an altitude the problem with this is that the short range thrusters are not as good as the variable thrusters which are much easier to alter so Another way of fixing this, of course, is just make sure to have the missiles in one section of the map and then tanks in the other. It's also a problem with this. If we have multiple tanks, this happens. The reason is they're all on the same range. They all want to get about 800 meters away from the target. And then when they all focus on the same target, they have a tea party like this. Yeah. Well, regardless of that, I think the missiles have proved themselves, and honestly, I am happy to see that the missiles are still not the powerhouse they used to be, and the 
advanced cannons are still the main weapon carrying us, which I'm very, very happy to see, because the missiles will forever be our support role, and that's exactly what I wanted them to be. So, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I need a name for this craft, and hopefully I will be naming it in the next video so we don't end up with loads of them with no names again, because that was a little bit weird. Also, need to make separate versions of each tank with slightly different broadside ranges. That's what it's called, broadside ranges. That took me like two minutes, so I imagine there was a skip there. Thank you for watching. Clearly my brain needs some rest, maybe some beer, and goodbye.